Hello, International Chess School students. To attain chess mastery, thousands of hours of study and practice are necessary. However, this doesn't assure success because the modern chess master must deal with many facets of the game, like openings, tactics, end game, and strategy. The International Chess School aims to improve your overall perspective of the game, focusing on each of these areas of the game by using a modern, clear, and systematic approach. Our school's lessons focus on the middle game and are meant to increase the student's positional understanding, teaching him how to simplify and keep control of the thinking process during the game and guide him to finding solutions for any practical situation that may arise on the chessboard. The first month's lessons are very important because they are meant to help you organize the thinking process during a chess game. You'll be familiarized with the routine of thinking and the puzzle will be put together month after month with a new pattern from opening, tactics, and strategy. So, after one year, you'll have a large set of tools to take with you to the chessboard. The goal of this lecture is to help you build a bridge between the theoretical knowledge and the lessons with the practical knowledge you must develop by solving the exercises and playing over the board games. Let's take a look at this position. White's last move was queen b3. According to the lesson, Think Like a Strong Player, the student should ask himself, what are the threats of this move? Of course, the discovered attack executed by the c4 pawn on the a2 g8 diagonal at the weak f7 pawn. Take a moment to notice the tension between the c4 and b5 pawns. c4 is attacked twice and defended three times, and b5 is attacked once and defended twice. You should now store this information in your mind. Defending f7 and the b takes c4 possibilities should be on your to-do list as black, because this issue is urgent and black must select the candidate move in accordance with this plan. The second question should be, what are the consequences of the opponent's last move? The queen left the d file, releasing the pressure against the d6 pawn, which is not really a weakness because for the time being it cannot be attacked. And the white queen was placed on b3 in front of the bishop, which is normal for an attacking battery. Then ask yourself about another consequence. You can realize that black can use his two attacks on c4 to decoy the white queen on c4, where it will be vulnerable to a pawn attack like d6, d5. This pawns and knights exchange on c4 will increase black's control over the center, as the c4 pawn controls d5, for instance. At the same time, knight d2 is better placed than knight b6, and trading these knights will make e4 vulnerable as well. You add this information to your to-do list, also stressing one more time the b takes c4 possibility. Actually, you may reach the conclusion that e4 can and must be attacked by evaluating the pawn structure, which resembles the Sicilian defense where the e4 pawn is an important target. As the position is concrete, you can already establish the candidate moves which fit in the to-do list, which are knight takes c4, queen d7, and rook a7. Rook e7 also defends f7, but looks inferior to rook a7, as rook e8 will have the task to support the e-pawn if black manages to push d6, d5. You may wonder how black should choose among the candidate moves. Using the routines described in the article Making Decisions in Chest will help with the following question. Does my move have a goal? Because by every move I must look for an objective, and preferably the move should fit with my to-do list. How can I increase the qualitative value of my pieces? And the third question, what pieces may I exchange from the enemy camp? Knight takes c4 looks tempting at first, but after knight takes c4, b takes c4, queen takes c4, white attacks on f7, and the bishop is attacked as well. Black must play queen d7, so you may now consider the candidate move queen d7, and may wish to use it as a proxilactive move before the exchanging 
on the knight c4 idea. But now as black threatens d6, d5, white can play queen d3, and black is just a bit better because of his central pawn majority and the d6, d5 possibility. Let's look at the second candidate move, queen d7. But after c takes b5, a takes b5, queen d3, an interesting way to create pressure on the backward d6 pawn by surrounding the d2 knight. Black can play queen b7, threatening the vulnerability of the e3 pawn with the help of a light square battery, queen plus bishop, again with a small edge due to the d6, d5 idea. Now another point on the to-do list may be added. Create a battery on the a8, h1 diagonal. Now, black played rook a7. Actually, the move seems to consider the to-do list as it defends f7, prepares b takes c4, or knight takes c4, but it also keeps the queen a8 idea in hand in order to put pressure on e4. But a difference between this move and queen d7 is rook a7 brings a new force into the game, as the rook will be able to reach d7, supporting the move d6, d5, a move that already increases the scope of bishop f8. So with the help of the questions described in the article Making Decisions in Chess, you can realize the small differences among the candidate moves. Now, white played bishop b2, and it's simply an auto-development move. White's position is not improved, either by the rook connection or the bishop on a long diagonal. Pay attention to these types of fake development moves. The move directly before your opponent castles, you may see this sort of automatic move which gives you the opportunity to seize the initiative. The International Chess School methods will help you accomplish this by asking yourself about the threats and consequences of White's last move. White could have found a better move.